What's going on YouTube? Today we're doing Tempest. Tempest is a machine that's tailored towards blue teaming. So as per the description, you are tasked to conduct an investigation from a workstation affected by a full chain, a uh, full attack chain. So basically, uh, we're going to um, go over a couple Windows logs and we're going to learn how to analyze these logs manually without the need for security information, even management tools such as Splunk uh, and other tools so we will go we will be going through the process of analyzing logs manually how we do that without the need of seam tools so in this as you can see the room is pretty long so in order for you guys to comprehend the concepts and the foundations of the uh, principles mentioned in this room i have divided the uh, progress of this room into three tasks as per video so in this video i'm going to the first three tasks we're going to extract the artifacts introduce how to analyze the logs manually and then in the next upcoming videos we're going to we go we'll be going to complete the other tasks so deploy the machine and split the view and here you have the machine that contains the incidents so if you open the incidents files we have three files one is network capture and other two files are as you can see event log files so basically these event log files are logs that are exported from the machine itself so as you can see here we're going to analyze these logs so the first task here is to as you can see the preparation log analysis so the first thing after we export the log from the event log the file or the audit trail from the event log we need to convert this into a format that can be parsed by other tools for example we'll be going to use um, the timeline explorer and also we will be going to use the sysmon view these two tools help visualize and parse the events exported from windows events viewer but before doing that, we have to convert the sysmon event log file into two formats. The first format is CSV and the other format is XML. The CSV format is needed for, as you can see, this tool, which is not opening. Yeah, so the XML format is needed for the sysmon view and the CSV format is needed in the timeline explorer. Both these tools help you visualize and parse event logs so you can explore all of the uh, artifacts or extract the artifacts through the events so let's go now to PowerShell and from here let's go to properties make the font 36 and now let's navigate to CD CD tools and then to EVTX ECMD, which is a list of tools to help you analyze or parse Windows event log file, log files. LS, and we have this tool here. So we're going to um, execute this tool against the file here, Sysmo. So you can't exactly or literally take the command from here. It is mentioned in the challenge. So let's take this directly, copy paste okay as you can see we define the file that we need to parse and then we define the format the output format of the uh, file so it's going to be csv and this is the path to the destination file it's going to be under incident files and the name of the result resultant file so we enter As you can see the file has been created and now it's being processed now while this is being done let's open sysmon and extract or export the sysmon uh, logs uh, into an xml format so we can use it with the sysmon viewer so sysmon right click so we right click sysmon and or we click on this save all events as and here we go to the same folder incident files at save as type we select xml and we name the file sysmon 
So select display information for this language and click on OK. Now it's going to take a minute for the file to be completely saved. And as you can see now, it's it points the size. As you can see, the size is zero kilobyte. Uh, this is being uh, uh, this is not done yet. So you have to wait for like one from one to two minutes, depending on the machine um, lagging or the delay. And then the file will be completely loaded. As you can see now, its size is 3000. No, this one. Refresh one more time. As you can see, it is now 628. And it will increase uh, as the file is being processed. So let's wait for this. Now, as we have two formats, one is CSV and one is XML, the files or the look or the audit trails are ready to be processed and analyzed. So let's first open the CSV one with Timeline Explorer. Going to click on open and go to desktop, navigate to the CSV file and open that. Okay. As you can see, it parses the CSV format into columns and here you can search for the a process, a file name, username, process ID, whatever. As you can see here, we are able to see all the information parsed in a somewhat easy to read format. Okay. Going back, let's check out the XML one. So it's still 628. Okay. Now let's go back to the tasks. Now these tasks are easy to answer guys. You just have to extract the SSH, SSH hatch for the capture file, the, the event file, sysmon, and the Windows event file. You can do that using this command. It's pretty much easy. No need for any explanation. Where is it? Okay. Get file hash, algorithm, SSH256, and put the file in. Okay, the other task now. Malicious document. So in malicious document, as you can see here, um, we are playing the role of a security analyst. And there is a malicious file in the extension doc, means it's a Microsoft document, has been downloaded. And upon, the, upon opening the document, another process has been executed that uh, executed another chain of commands to, you know, download other malware or contact malicious domains. So what we need to do, we need to investigate the malicious document, how it has been downloaded, what were the processes, and what were the following commands that have been executed after opening the Microsoft or the malicious file. So to do that, we have a couple of questions here to help you go through the process. And the first question is, the user of this machine was compromised by a malicious document. What's the file name of the document? Now, given the facts here, we can go back to Timeline Explorer, which is open twice here. Yes. And now here, given that the file is um, in word format, let's search for the machine must compromise. What's the file name of the document? Okay. And as you can see, it's saying that the user downloaded the malicious document via Chrome. So if we search for the Chrome here. Okay. So, so these are the, as you can see, these are the description of the events. So at file create, let's check this out, file create. This shows the executable that downloaded the file and in payload data for as you can see here guys we have this file free magicals doc if we take a look at the so it is here let's see it's kind of weird to follow through all of these columns. So file create stream hash. And it comes right after file create. 
So, if we go back here, as you can see, this file has been created using the uh, Chrome process. So it means that using Chrome, the user has downloaded this document. So this is the name of the document that has been downloaded. What's the name of the compromised user and machine? Now you can double click on this one to get information or more details about this. So target file name. If we take a look at payload data three, as you can see, it's Chrome. Now to find out the username, as you can see, the username is Benny Maru. That's the username. And the machine name is, as per the challenge, it's Tempest. So this goes the answer like that, username and machine. You can also find the answer using Sysmon view, by the way. But I'm not sure if the file has been exported completely. So it has been exported completely, as you can see, the XML file, 3142. If we go to Sysmon view now and export or import this file, Click on import. Now here, as you can see, imported 2,559 events. Make sure that you get this number after the import is completed. If you don't get this number, it means the file that you exported is missing. So just make sure to wait two to three minutes and make sure that the size of the XML file is three mega or three, yeah, three megabytes, megabyte. Okay, so now we go to OK, and here we search for Chrome. As you can see, we find one process. We click on that, it's added to the diagram, and then we have one image path. We add this, and we have three sessions, GUIDs, so we add all of them. Okay, as you can see, these are the relationships between the process and the following events that happened. At the machine tempest so we have 10 as queries we have file creation and we have as you can see stream created now if you go back to the first question it can be answered here as you can see by chrome there is an event file created and the file name is free magicals it answers your first question if you double click on that you get also details about the full path of the file which shows the username added and given that you have the machine name you got the answer to the next question now what's the pid of the microsoft word process that opened the malicious document so now we are concerned with the uh, program that opened the document so what's the pid of the microsoft word process that opened the malicious document so the malicious document name is free magicals if we search with this name using the timeline explorer we get around eight entries and as you can see here at the executable info take a look at this at this column you see the file and the program that's used to open this file so it's winword now it's asking the pid of this process so the pid can be found at the same row if you go back here Highlight this to the left, to the left, to the left, to the left. So as you can see, the process PID is 496. Now, based on sysmon logs, what's the IPv4 address resolved by the malicious domain used in previous question? Now, we want to find out what's the IP address that has been contacted by the malicious document or by the process that executed when the malicious document has been opened. So when the malicious document uh, was opened by the win word, there is another, there was another uh, process that got executed and contacted this IP address. So if you go to sysmon, or if you go to the sysmon view here, and we search for win word. Uh -huh. Double click on these. This is the process that opened the Word document. And in this process, we should be we should be able to see all of the DNS queries that uh, followed after. So we have four DNS queries in here. If we scroll down, as you can see, we have the information about the IPs and the domains. The first domain is in office.com. It's not the malicious domain. 
the next domain that was queried is fish team xyz and after that dns query we can see the uh, dns res uh, resolution of this domain uh, so we have the destination ip points to 167 71 199 191 which happens to be the domain name or the ip address of the malicious domain name okay now here this is kind of uh, not difficult but it needs some work so what's the base 64 encoded string in the malicious payload executed by the document so we know that when winward when the document was opened by winward there were there were following events happened among which the dns queries in addition to a payload that got executed as you can see we have in the summary of events we have process create if we scroll down into process create here it is but we still don't know guys what's the, the the command so we have to go back here and maybe in the event id put equal to one one corresponds to a process has been created so we're sure guys that when the base 64 string was uh, when the payload executed there was another process that has been created so we should search by this event id here one and we get one only one entry but because we have the filters open let's highlight everything all right so we have a couple things here so we want, we are concerned with the uh, parent command line we should look for a command that contains base64 string even if there were no question in here it was just live analysis it's worth looking at the parent command line to see if there is a pattern of base64 string okay payload data nothing here parent process scrolling down so here we have nothing executable how about we check the executable info column okay Let's check um, payload data four, payload data six. So these are the parent processes. Payload data five. So you we got we we don't have any information about the command executed. Let's check payload data four. Well, these are the processes the parent processes we want to check for commands so i'm sure we missed something here let's go up so these are system events system executables okay scrolling all the way down let's see these So all of these are system commands. What's this one? Let's double click on this one. As you can see guys, there is a base64 string here. If we make this bigger, let's see this one. This is the base64 string guys. If you copy that, you should get your answer correctly here. Try, yes. So that is the malicious, uh, or that's the base64 string 
as you can see so what was the base 64 encoded string in the malicious payload executed by the document okay what's the cv number now let's decode this one this is maybe cyber chief So from base 64 input and this is the command app environment startup yeah this is the command as you can see that contacted the malicious domain fish team okay and this is the process let's google this to find out if there is any relationship between this process and any cve vulnerability maybe CV 2022 Microsoft Support Diagnostic Vulnerability. What's the question here? What's the CV number of the exploit used by the attacker to achieve remote code execution? So maybe this is the CV number and it's a vulnerability in the Microsoft Support Diagnostic Tool. Nope. Format with no CV, I think. Yeah, this one is correct. So up until now, guys, we learned how to visualize and analyze logs manually. And also up until now, we learned that there was a malicious document, more document file that has been downloaded. And upon opening the document file, there was another malicious payload that has been executed and contacted the malicious domain and unfortunately it exploited a uh, vulnerability in the Microsoft Diagnostic Tool. In the upcoming videos, we will continue the, analyzing the chain of events that happened after that. So I hope you guys learned something from this video and I will see you in the next video.